Welcome back to another Albato video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another game played by Setsuko. Now, Setsuko, Setsuko is currently rank 1 NA, but Socks and Dish Soap are very close, and Liquid Robin. And if you don't know, the Defender Cup just ended, or the, uh, the snapshot for getting into the Defender Cup just ended. And essentially what the Defender Cup is, is a tournament that you get entered into by placing at a certain point on the ladder. And you can either get into the Defender Cup by placing in the top 196, or you can skip a day and make it into the top 32, essentially giving you a buy. So let's talk about the game. He started Glove, and he was able to get an Ash 2, and you can see now there he has a Galio 2, and he chooses Built Diff. Now, Galio is a really strong unit, so even though he, Galio can never get Built Diff value, because he will always provide the civilian trait, you can see that Setsuko still values the upgraded Galio over, you know, just a random one cost unit. But yeah, Ash really benefits from attack speed. You don't really want to go for build different, but if that's kind of all you can, if that's the only thing that makes sense to play, then and you have, you know, strong upgraded units, especially if one of the upgraded units is Ash, then build diff is normally a really easy Top four, top four, when you have an opener like this. So if you are unaware, Glove no longer gives dodge chance and gives 20% crit rate. So Thieves Gloves just gives you 40% crit rate. And on a unit like Ash, where she basically has no ability. Her ability just increases her attack speed. Crit is extremely powerful on Ash because she's only auto-attacking, but makes her auto-attacks deal significantly more damage when you increase her crit rate, because auto-attacks can always crit. We saw that he got a Poppy 2 there, and look, he's holding on every single one of these pairs. Does not want to... He wants to greed strongest board, he does not want to greed econ in the early game because the way that you get econ in a built diff game is that you maintain your gold by trying to get the biggest streak you possibly can. You can see he did hit one of his upgrades and now he can go ahead and sell the Wukong because he also has this Poppy too and he's never going to be playing Wukong if he's playing Poppy. But if he did hit the Wukong 2 and he didn't hit Blitz there, then I think there's a good chance that he would uh, sack Built Different on Poppy and on Wukong and he would just play them because that's just his strongest board. So now this is a good chance to try and figure out what we can learn from him. This isn't just a free top 4 anymore. He did not 5 streak and he is not like super rich or anything. 20 gold is is a good benchmark to to hit but he's also not getting the extra win streak gold from five streaking he puts his ash in the front because he got sunfire cape from thieves gloves fight is really close here he just barely loses now that honestly is a good thing it's a one unit loss but he, he was able to two streak. Two streak gives you one extra gold. So, I mean, it's only one extra gold. So he sold the Ash there. I'm actually not sure why he sold the Ash, considering how strong Ash is with these gloves. Sold the Ash to guarantee, like, the Econ Threshold, but I feel like he could have sold the Sona, so I'm pretty sure. Curious on why he sold the ash there. I think he might be trying to fit an underground. I'm actually not exactly sure. 
No. You just drop glove and tear. And he chooses to make a second thieves gloves. Normally a pretty safe bet when you have built different is you want like a lot of sword items. But as you can see, he does not have a single sword item. I'm still extremely used on why he sold the ash there, but I guess it was just to make eco. Okay, so we have mirror image, frontline fencing, and burning spirit. So you really can't play frontline fencing and burning spirit in a comp like this. Uh, there's nothing to play around, but uh, the, the LeBlanc augment that he just chose duplicates mirror image, duplicates a unit. And there's always something that you can duplicate. So, and look at that. The duplication gives you a unit at 70% max health. So he duplicated a unit with more mogs to make sure that the unit that got duplicated still has more health. So if you didn't, if you didn't, you wanted, if you, there's something that you wanted to learn from this interaction is that duplicating a unit, even if the health total is artificial through items, it actually still goes through because you can see how much health that that Ezreal had. The Axe is a really powerful unit with Built Diff, with Built Diff, and Nyla is a really powerful unit with Built Diff. Whenever I play Built Diff, I almost always look to go Nyla three because it's really hard to play Zed in Built Diff because Zed it's empowered by his traits, and without his traits, he's really not that strong. You definitely want to play the backline carries where you play all of the ace units to get rid of the the build diff trait. And Nyla uh, scales extremely well with HP and attack speed. So normally if you're rolling on 7 and you're looking for units to hit, I normally always hold on to every single Nyla. So he's able to get a Samira here. He gets a Belveth with Glove off of Carousel. And he gets a Samira in the shop. And so you can see that his only trait active is Threat. That's because of Aesol. Aesol is... Her threats do not work with Build Diff. Even though they essentially have no traits, they still have the Threat trait, which always is active. It's kind of like Guild, almost. It's like Reverse Guild. So he's trying to figure out whether or not this, uh, this built diffless Belveth is stronger than this Ezreal. Or I mean, than whatever unit he had, and I forget what it was. But he duplicates the Belveth there, probably trying to just kill as many units as possible. I think built diff is definitely the type of comp where you you're never going to eight anytime sooner than four or five, and you're probably rolling a lot of gold on seven. So let's see exactly how he plays this. And considering how different the meta is now, uh, let's yeah, let's see how much gold he rolls on level seven here. He's looking for LeBlanc because he's always going to play LeBlanc. He's looking for the ace units so he can eliminate the ace traits because you have more. You have two or three ace, then ace is not active. But if you have one or four, then it is active. What you want to do is you want to play three ace units to make sure that none of them actually get the trait. Now, what does suck about that, though, is that they do lose the ace trait. So they don't actually kill the units at 10% max health, which is pretty important. So even though he's playing aces, you never want to go ace crest because, again, he has built diff. He just chooses Jeweled Lotus there. So now all of his units are critting. This is actually extremely powerful with Thieves Gloves. Because now all of the abilities that are that that are allowed to crit with Jeweled Lotus get empowered with Thieves Gloves. So I'm curious. Okay. So he just chooses to put Thieves Gloves on Leona and MF regardless. He doesn't want to depend on getting good items on his Samira. But these gloves on this MF is actually insane. If you want to pay attention to the damage on the side, then maybe always keep in mind exactly how much damage this MF is doing, because I'm pretty sure even this 
this MF1 is going to be doing a lot of damage. And then we can also see that he just puts Zack and Fiddlesticks in. And then he's, he's duplicating the Fiddlesticks with the LeBlanc. This is another really strong strat. Whenever you play LeBlanc and you're rolling gold on 7, you really want to try and hit one of those really impactful 5 costs. Those really impactful champions that have um, really strong abilities. Because normally the reason why the champions are so strong is because they have like one strong ability. It's not necessarily um, because of how well they work in in specific comps. So yeah, a unit like Fiddlesticks, a unit like Urgot, a unit like Syndra, they have all they all have really extremely strong abilities. So those are units that you want to look to try and uh, duplicate with the LeBlanc hero power. You can see now he has three Fiddlesticks on his board. And then they're just gonna like in in waves the fiddlesticks are just going to They're just gonna stun stun CC damage the team. Pretty hard to get through one wave of fiddlesticks. Now you have to get through three waves of fiddlesticks. Yeah, also take a look at how much this how much damage this Leona is doing as well. Leona's ability can crit, and it's getting 40% extra crit. The Leona is basically just... I mean, it already does, like, one-tap a unit, but it's, like, extremely one-tapping the unit. And you can see he's not even he's not even rolling anymore. Like, he thinks that this is strong enough. He does have Samira 2. He does have, you know, all these fiddlesticks. And he is streaking. So it, it seems like his strategy was just to try and cheese out as much round as possible by duplicating this fiddlesticks, and it's actually working out pretty well. He reforges the spatula there because he knows he, he can't get another spatula, so there's no point in trying going for pawn. And of course, he's playing build diff, but he's not going to make any traits. So he just immediately reforges it. It's a Zeke's. Or, I mean, he gets a sword and a belt, so I forgot he had. He still had an item on Samira, so he goes ahead and makes Giant Slayer. Puts the belt on Sejuani. Oh, wow, just barely loses out there. So Samira's definitely top DPS, top DPSing by far. But MF is pretty close. And then... All of the all the fiddlesticks are just kind of you know dunking the team. The wave of fiddlesticks does its job and eliminates as much units as possible. But now we get to this point in time of the game where people have actual boards that are actually strong, and so if you don't have you know your team comp fully fully developed. You can't, you can't really cheese any fights anymore. But as far as positioning goes, I'm pretty sure he's just trying to make sure he kills as many units as possible, especially with these fiddlesticks just spreading, spreading damage in, in like a whole bunch of different spots. This Samira and this MF just crossfire. He just wants to make sure to not clump up his back line so that he doesn't get himself through like some sort of AP AP like spell or through a hacker Z. I don't think there are any Z players in this lobby. Oh you can see he gets this fiddle six two. Goes ahead and itemizes the GS the fiddle sticks and then of course he's gonna be duplicating this fiddle six two. Okay let's see see how crazy this fiddle sticks is about to go. Also, something to note, oh, the Fiddlesticks kind of got lost in the back there. It got baited to alt backwards because I think there was a, a new new. But you see how he has this Fiddlesticks on the side. You definitely want to make sure your Fiddlesticks is in the front and on one of the sides. If you put Fiddlesticks in the middle, then he almost always just gets stuck on frontline units. So you can see he's, yeah, he's putting Fiddlesticks... 
like pretty far on one of these sides so that fiddlesticks normally jumps towards like the center of all the units. He actually got stuck there. It's probably because this guy's front line was also right on the edge. Most people put their front line in the middle. So fiddlesticks kind of wraps around because I think what happens is he alts and then you don't see him move. You don't see him walk to towards where he's going to go. He just kind of appears there after like a second. But I think if he is blocked, then he he actually just cannot move through units. Arc fiddlesticks. Okay, this fiddlesticks is a beast. You can see just by abusing this fiddlesticks LeBlanc interaction and playing uh, strongest board with built diff, he's able to just get a pretty pretty clean top four but the thing is he he doesn't want a top four he wants he wants a first so let's see how far how much how much further he can take this wow really close fight there with Amde. when he gets a blue buff gunblade leona really strong item combination there leona Basically just going to one tap. First unit it sees. This guy has double Zephyr. He Zephyr's his fiddlesticks. Okay, let's see this fiddlesticks. It's the whole back line. Spark GS. Top two, okay. So the only player left, let's see when he scouts him. Okay, so it's the AP player. He d he definitely wants like more Aegis in. He doesn't have any Aegis, but also at the same time, he doesn't want to give his his Leona. He doesn't want his Leona to lose build diff, and he's also probably just playing the units that give him the most. He's just playing the strongest unit. How do we get cheesed by the Zanyas there? They both go for. For uh, for Shroud. I know why Setsuko is going for Shroud. Setsuko is going for Shroud because he wants the Shroud against the opponent. But the reason why the opponent went for the Shroud is because he wants to deny the Shroud from from Setsuko. That's kind of how it goes with Zephyr as well. It's not necessarily you always want a Zephyr, but you don't want to have to play against Zephyrs. So normally that's why people always go for Zephyr off of Carousel. So who wins that fight? He basically has one life. Let's see if he can. He can. Uh, he can get this top one. He gets double locket from his his thieves gloves. He gets blue buff rabidons for this mf. This mf is about to go insane. Okay, so even though he didn't zephyr the Talia there, you can see he still got the zephyr on the, some of the most impactful units. He zephyred the. The Janna and the Syndra. And most of the time, you want to Zephyr. You want your Zephyr to give you the most value, right? But a lot of people kind of think that the most value is Zephyring uh, the DPS carry. But the thing is, is a lot of the uh, utility alts can often be more impactful than the carry's alt. So played around that perfectly he's trying to figure out exactly what item he wants i think oh actually no he's doing the uh oh no okay never mind i thought he was doing the anvil cheese because you don't you can't tell what item their opponent gonna your opponent's gonna have i thought he was gonna wait it out and he was gonna get another shroud so that he could shroud both sides wow but yeah he ends up just going for the uh he ends up just going for the Edge of Night, gets Edge of Night on his Samira, one of his top DPSs. You can see in this last fight, the Fiddlesticks was, was the top DPS, though, because, I mean, yeah, Fiddlesticks too with GS and Morello and all that. Extremely powerful, but I thought that was a pretty interesting game played by Setsuko, current rank 1. You can see his, his today he's doing pretty well, 2-2-2-1. Two, 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 uh, lots to learn there. If you, didn't, if you haven't played Bill Diff that much, then there's like a good idea in how how you can play a build diff game, also play around this this LeBlanc augment. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you like the video, like it. Uh, I'll see you on the next video.